Good morning everyone. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator. This is David Steele and here's my truck. Although, give me a few seconds to negotiate this, uh, this left turn. Right. I'll switch to an external view. There we go. We're in a Volvo today. We're in a Volvo VNL. Um, the model, or the, it's the original VNL in the game. They call it the VNL 2014 these days. But this particular machine is specified as an early 2000s machine, and yes, it's a 4x2. Rather resplendent at that, too. The best short little guy there. Under the hood, we have a Volvo D12. That's the older generation engine. And this is the entry level uh, donk, or donkey. This is the 335 horsepower version. And so this machine is potentially ideal for um, hauling all the way across the... No, wait, it's probably not. This machine is uh, is ideal for those short hauls. Now, this is not a short person video, although... Um, and uh, I, I can't recall if I said anything about introducing the, the 335 version into the game. Well, that was a, that was a time ago, and it's a bit remiss of me not to not to say anything about it. Let's line that up. That's pretty close to the gate here, but hey, close. But we're actually we're just about on it. And I think I messed that up. Royally messed it up. What did I manage to do there? You know what? Let's jump in the cabin. Let's take a look out the window. So the D12 follows um, the rest of the Volvo family in that it is uh, a real sweet. Oh yeah, I messed it up. It's a real sweet, uh, low down torquey engine. Volvo got this thing right. I want to get that close. See if we can get under it this this way. There we go. Okay, alright. Let's get my ride height back where it should be. Let's get the trailer connected. I'm going to go ahead and shut the windows. It's a cold night. It's 53 degrees. And I live in Texas. That's, uh, that's freezing. Right. A uh, quick... Um, Quick look at the truck again, I think. So uh, here's the extent of you. Um, wow, I made a right mess of that. But uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, green with a black stripe because who doesn't like a black stripe? We don't have any of the aero packaging on this this machine. It's not really built for high speed work. But instead, uh, this is the kind of truck that uh, I use for my local um, runs for those trailers of low value goods. I suppose you might say. And in this case, this is uh, about 33,000 pounds of used packaging materials. There we go, that we're taking on a, on a pretty short trip today. It is late at night, like I say. It is uh, just gone 10 o'clock. It's a 10, 19 or 22, 19. I like my, my clock to be 24 hour. And uh, yeah, this traffic should be light. That's that's good, and uh, with the lack of power from this this engine, it's not a particularly heavy cargo. But the lack of power is not really going to be too de detrimental to anything. But yeah, speaking of power, I, I was about to to say that the D12, it's the D12 VE is what it's called, has a lot of uh, low down torque, and for an engine that is is a little older, that is that is very welcome. So it may only have 335 rated horsepower, but its peak torque is 1254 pounds. And as I recall, it kicks in at 1050. It would be 1000. You know, that said, it may be a little higher than that. But the torque curve is such that it's producing nearly maximum torque at uh, 1000 RPM. Transmission today is an Eaton Auto Shift. It's a third gener uh, second generation, I believe. Actually, not, not, not a third. It's a 10 speed. And uh, we're using a 3.9 final drive today. So uh, at 65 miles an hour, it's doing about 1550, 1575 RPM. 
Oh no, I want some in here. Oh, I see. I'm gonna join the freeway. Or the hog, the highway. Right, yeah, so it is, uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a theme here. It's uh, usefully short in the gearing department. Oh, let's, let's go. Wow. Accelerated hard. So another celebration uh, for me, I suppose you might say, is that um, I've tweaked a few of the settings in uh, in my primary um, profile, and it, it has improved performance. Right now, I'm getting a bit of jank, so it hasn't fixed it, but it's improved the interface and when you're moving around the game. A long and short words, a couple of mods I, I used that appear to have left, I guess configuration files or something similar that is causing the game to just produce lots and lots of error messages. I mean, we're talking thousands of error messages here. And uh, they've they've now gone. So took a bit of time to go through that. It has improved how smooth the game runs. Uh, it's potentially improved it when you're driving. So to say really. I've also, I suppose what I should say is, before I would change a graphic setting and it seemingly had no impact on the performance whatsoever. Something else was causing my processor to just stall out. Okay, well there must be something going on because a clue is that when ATE, SCS even released the Academy, it ran great. Okay, so there was my clue, and um, sure enough, I, I took a long detailed look at the error messages and trying to figure out what on earth was going on, and essentially just noticed that when I accessed certain trucks, it would generate a whole bunch of errors. So visit each truck in turn, see what's missing. It, it took a time, but it's running better. Not perfect, that hey, uh, I'm ever optimistic that um, SCS will optimize the game like they did going up to version 1.49 that made certain features, certain things much more pleasurable and I'm talking about driving in the rain. It just didn't lag after that. So hopefully, just hopefully, maybe 1.3 will have some, some improvements in the performance, maybe not. Either way, I'm still using lossless scaling to improve um, how, how well the, the game displays for me. And having made this change and tweaked a couple of settings uh, elsewhere in the game, I turned down a couple of, of, of the graphic settings. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this in, in a few seconds. It, it's a lot more playable. Uh, right now it's a very solid 30 frames. <laughs> it's just dropped to 28. 30 frames per, per second and um, double it to 60. I've got a smooth experience. I, I don't ask for anything else. I'm, I'm very happy with that. So what did I tweak? Well, I reduced the vegetation detail. I was running it at high and I reduced it down to medium. I can tell a bit of a difference, but it's not massive. Hey, you got a green light. Oh. And the second thing I did was I removed the grass. Now, my graphics card should be capable of handling all that graphical workload, but my CPU is just not capable of sending enough information through to the graphics card. And so I was getting a janky experience. I'm still toying with the idea of, I think it's long shadows or toy, uh, tall shadows, distant shadows, far shadows, I think that that's what it's called because cities still provide a good chunk of jank. And and we saw it a, a few minutes ago, that driving around in the city, yeah, it, it's, it's not always pretty. That's worse in the rebuild or the newer versions of the map, because the, there's a lot more detail in the game. So hopefully, the new uh, DX12 engine at some point in the future, we just don't know when, will improve that. But it's not an overnight transition, 
hey, I've got the game running as well as it needs to right now. So yeah, I am... Um, I feel like I've avoided playing ATS and ETS2. ETS2 has ran better, but I felt like I've avoided playing this game because it's just not been a pleasurable experience. And throw in some extra overhead through recording my screen as I'm doing now, and yeah, it, it's not always been not always been pretty. My GPU is working about 30% capacity, 30 to 35% capacity right now. My CPU, whoa, is showing, well, 15, 25, 20, 18%. And it's a 16 core, well, it's an 8 core with hyperthreading. So that's what, five, six threads, but I foolishly left the Chrome browser running and that's uh, having an impact and there are lots of processes. On that engine brake there, which works very well. Huh. I've got a green light here, but I don't know if we're going to be able to go through on this this uh, cycle. Oh, hey, we are. It was a little speedy going around there, but we didn't fall over. Yeah, so CPU workload is is a little higher than I would uh, I would hope. In fact. My machine's got a lot of processors running, and about 60 of those are almost certainly to do with Chrome. But hey, um, that's that's my bad, and the fact that it's actually running fairly okay is is good news because yeah, you know, not so long ago it just wouldn't. Shut everything down, turn off the lights, and maybe play some ATS. Maybe if it was if I was lucky. Go straight. So what's new? Well, we're almost at my destination, but uh, I've spent quite a lot of time in the last six weeks uh, adding additional engines to the Still Productions engine pack. And uh, in, in that case, I mean, adding the Euro engines has, was a, is and has been a, felt like a monumental undertaking. And there are still some, some areas that I really want to go back and Im improve. For instance, those wretched badges that you can access or that are accessed in Euro Truck Simulator. You know, the ones that, that uh, if you play ETS, they, they have a badge on the truck that tells the world what model engine you've got or, or length chassis or whatever it is. I cannot get those to reliably work. They'll work in ETS too. And I'm trying to use the same um, mod pack, the same files for ATS and they won't work in ATS. So I go ahead and amend it in ATS and it won't work in ETS too. And by work, the Steam Workshop uploader that SCS provide, it refuses to upload it if it doesn't think it's compatible and so, wow. It takes the time to go through those files anyway, but when I have to go through and then go back and fix something that I don't understand why it's not working, Usually it's a file object or a file reference not found. And I don't see anything that's pointing to it anyway. Yeah, it's it's getting a little frustrating. But I've gone back and added a whole bunch of, of engines to um, to the Steel Productions engine pack. We've got some, what I'm going to say, some cross-pollination. And so some of the engines in ETS2 are now appearing in the trucks in ATS and vice versa. And that my, my goal, my ambition here was to always do this. Now, I was asked, have you ever thought about doing a realistic version of this? Yes, absolutely, I, I have. But a part of me would love to do this and it, it wouldn't be that difficult. The other part of me is like, but you know what? I like to play that. But what if I could use this engine in this in this truck? So right now, the engine pack generally has um, a lot of engines available to a lot of trucks. Now, not every engine for every truck. If you want to run with a Mac engine, you'll only find it in Mac trucks. Can I just drop my cruise to 55? I think. If you want to run a Scania engine, well. You'll find that available in international trucks. B 
because Scania and Man and International have the same parent. It's actually, the, it's the same parent that owns Volkswagen, which is unfortunate because I'm not a fan of Volkswagen products, but I like Scania and I really enjoyed Saab. But anyway, I digress. So yeah, um, there's been a bit of cross-pollination. Uh, if you want to run your um, DAF XF95 with a Cummins engine, like they used to back in the day, I should add. You can get those with an N14, you can. You want to run it with an L10? Sure. I want to kill the power here, yep, yeah, I do. I don't really want to engine break into this uh, quaint little uh, little city. We're actually at Shola already, which is my destination, so that's good. Get ready to so yeah, I really wanted just to, to ask myself the question. So what would the Iveco Stralis be like with a Cummins X12? Turn right. And if I like it, yeah, maybe other people will too. So. Right now, I've, I've made it, I've pretty much everything's available for everything. Now, I have played around with the, the factory flag and the aftermarket flag for various mods, but I've not found it to be obvious enough. What's this up ahead? I need to be in the left lane. And I have to go in and touch every file individually, and that is... That's pretty onerous. There are a lot of, of files, and a lot of uh, trucks, and a lot of engines that are supported by the Still Productions engine pack, and I don't regret it in the slightest, because the mod is selfish, it's what I want to drive. But at the same time... I turn left. Depending on the truck, you can have 350 custom items that are available for it. And that's across transmissions and, and engines. So the thing I was asked recently um, was my involvement with, with Z-Mods and, and how, how that is working. And, well, yeah, I've, I've provided some engine definitions um, for Z and the team. And he doesn't always like them. And that's okay. At the end of the day... Um, there's no real right or wrong way to set up an engine. It, it's as much preference as anything else. And so um, some of the recent engines just haven't used my, my torque curves, my shift points. And wow, if I'm getting creaky with my voice. And something I've been thinking about is setting up um, a way of using easily using the torque curves that I might want to use with a particular engine, but using Z's sound. I don't want to call that patch because I'm not I'm not patching Z's uh, engine and sound pack. I'm just tweaking it to how I want to use it as opposed to how, how Z's got it set up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you have any thoughts there, I'd love to hear them. Um, you know, if, if you think this is a good idea, if you think don't don't touch it because um, it's, it's someone else's creations. If uh, you know, any thoughts on the matter, just uh, let me know in the comments below. I am curious to see what what people think. Right, we've got our uh, our packaging it's, is arriving. Let's see the state of the delivery. Let's have a quick look here. Frank. Let's secure the truck. It's now 46 Fahrenheit. Okay, it's probably going to put it the the, the closest um, bay. Uh, not the, well, it, the one that's not numbered, but let's see. Oh, it didn't. Oh, what do you know? Well, we're going to go with that one then. Because, I mean, how hard can that be, right? I may regret this. The shorter trucks can sometimes be very difficult to, to maneuver like this. You'd think they'd be easier with them being shorter, but they're actually a little harder. Alright, let's go ahead and do this. Let's get my hazards on, my four ways. It's been a while since I've done this in the video, and like I say, what could possibly go wrong? Quite a lot already, I would think. Go ahead and do this, and then straighten it up. Let's 
take a look out the window. Hmm. Okay. Enough space here. What I want to try and do is essentially get underneath the trailer so that we point it towards the, the back of the spot. Yeah, this thing is so petite, it's very easy to, to, to do, but it's also very easy to overcorrect. We'll start to correct it. Check my front. Yeah, there's nothing there. Uh, I may have messed it up, but we'll, we'll try. Oh, it might, we might be okay. Just moving the, the truck using the idle of this D12. So with an automated shift like this and a, a lot of torque low down, it does make life a lot easier. Go ahead and uh, trickle it forward a little bit, I think. How about that? Not bad. For someone that's extremely rusty at doing this. Oh, oh, come on. You're, you're sneaking too much. There we go. Alright. I think it's gonna be fine, but it's a little it's a little rough. see a dang thing. Yeah, I think I'm... Yeah, okay, there we go. They're, they're good with that. That works for me. Right, let's go ahead and uh, turn this thing off. Get those windows shut and let's see how well we did. Right, so let's do that. And disconnect. Okay, just 124 miles today, not so far, and 19.8 gallons of diesel can consume, so mm, it's a little bit, just over six, about six and a quarter, so not not the best run, but it is pretty short. The shorter trips tend to use a bit more fuel because you spend a lot more time getting up to speed and, as you do cruising, and when you cruise, you use a lot less. Right, well, I um, hope you got something from this. I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, if you have, just let me know in the comments below. If you think it sucks so bad you couldn't bear to watch another one, let me know that too, because eh, it's also useful. Well, thanks so much for hanging out, and uh, hopefully I'll see you the next time. Thanks so much, everyone. Goodbye.